Tina Tiainen, and today we are going to learn how to dye wool with food coloring. This technique works the best with animal fibers such as wool, silk, or fleece. This technique is also good for nylon, spun silk, and wool dreads that are already felted. Dyeing your own wool not only saves you money, but it also gives you the creative freedom to have the kind of wool that you want to work with. Dyeing your own wool gives you the ability to make solid colors, painted colors, as well as multicolored designs and transitions. You will need material to dye, such as wool roving. This is wool roving, and you can also have a little bit extra to have a test strip to make sure that you don't mess up your good stuff if you have the wrong color on accident. Grab some white vinegar. You'll need food coloring as well. I'm trying this stuff as well as this stuff. Now this is gel and I don't know if it's going to work, but let's find out. Also keep in mind that you can use Kool-Aid in place of food coloring. However, if you are using Kool-Aid, you don't need to add vinegar since it already has citric acid. You will also need rubber gloves. We're going to need some tongs. I don't know if this is appropriate. <laughs> Aluminum foil. Now for every color you have, you're going to need its own individual pan for large amounts of dye or some kind of a jar for smaller amounts of dye. And since we're working with dyes, it may get on your clothes or the surrounding environment. So make sure that there's a tablecloth around the area or something to protect the area if it matters. And also make sure that your clothes are something scrubby that you don't mind getting destroyed. If you want to do anything other than a solid color, you're going to need to have either a turkey baster or a syringe with no needle, or if you want to do really small designs, you can use a paintbrush. You'll also need an oven or a microwave, as well as hot water and a sink. Make sure you have some kind of a drip tray for your aluminum foil bowl that you're going to make. Also this may go in the oven if you want it to. However, don't put this in the microwave if you're using a microwave, obviously, because aluminum plus microwave equals... Ah! Okay, so now we know. To begin, fill your sink with warm water. You're going to need enough to submerge your material. Then add one cup of vinegar. Be careful not to agitate wool when it's hot and in water because this will make it felt. However, if you're already working with a dreadlock that's already felted, it won't matter because it's already felted. Let that sit for half an hour soaking. While that's soaking, we are going to prepare the dye. To prepare your dye, get out your glass pan or mason jar that you're going to use. For every color, it will need its very own pan or mason jar. So make sure you have enough ready for all the different dyes you want to make. Now in your pan or mason jar, add one cup of hot water. Then add three tablespoons of vinegar. You can make this batch bigger, but keep the ratio one hot water to three tablespoons of vinegar. The more vinegar you have, the more saturated your color will be. So if you want less of an intense color, have less vinegar. If you want a subtle color, start by adding your dye drop by drop and then build up to the color you want. If your dye is too intense of a color, you can always add water to it. This will dilute it and it's not going to mess it up, so don't worry about it. If you want a bright, intense color, add 20 drops of dye. On the back of your food coloring box, there should be a little graph that tells you how to make your own food coloring specialized colors. Some of the hardest colors to work with are purple and black. 
Purple is a mix of red and blue, and red and blue have different absorption rates as well as different acidity levels. So red is gonna absorb first and blue will absorb much later on. So if you're making a purple dye, sometimes it can end up looking painted, where parts of it are pink, parts of it are purple, and parts of it are blue. If you don't like this look and you want a uniform purple color, here are some things to try. For the first step in this, you're gonna be soaking it, and instead of using warm water for the purple, use cold water at first. And then when you have your dye bath ready, have it cold at first, and then gradually heat that up. This is gonna help your purple absorb. Another thing to try is when you're adding your vinegar, don't add it all at once, but do it one teaspoon to one tablespoon at a time and slowly gradually add it. This will help the pH be better for them to absorb at the same amount of time. Try adding one teaspoon to one tablespoon of salt to your dye mix if you're making purple. Another way to get purple is to dye your material pink or red in the first place and then come back and dye it blue after that. That should give you a purple. One of the reasons black is hard to work with for food coloring is because you can't get a strong enough concentration to make it actually look black. It ends up looking brown and kind of splotchy and painted. So if you want black, use a real dye, not food coloring. If you want to have a marbleized effect, don't mix your dye when you add it to the water and instead just add your wool right away. Then it will absorb those special little marbleized lines. Mm. However, if you want a normal, solid, even color, not marbleized, then go ahead and mix it up. <laughs> Remove and wring out your material. If you're trying to dye your wool a solid color, let it sit directly in the dye bath to soak. Leave it for several, several minutes until the color starts to absorb. Then you're going to want to take it out and place it on a tray. If you're going to use more than one color of dye on a piece, you're going to want to create an aluminum foil bowl. This bowl will have to have deep wrinkles in it that can keep the water away from your roving on top. To do this, simply grab a bunch of aluminum foil, squish it together in lots of ways so that there's wrinkles and canals for the water to go. This will prevent the dyes from mixing together and creating brown and also dyeing it in ways that you did not intend. Place it on a tray. Now that you have your wool on your aluminum foil bowl, it is safe to begin painting it. So grab your dye with either a turkey baster, syringe, or paintbrush and add it to the spots where you want it on your wool. Make sure you don't make it too wet because the colors will end up mixing together. You can even achieve a tie-dye look if you have certain colors in different places. Once your dye looks the way you want it to, now it's time to bake it. If you're working with a multicolored piece, then take it off of the aluminum foil bowl and put it onto the tray below. It should be dry. Make sure there's no extra wetness down there. You can either use an oven or a microwave. For the oven, you're gonna to wanna to set it to 200 degrees Fahrenheit and leave your concoction in there for 15 minutes. If you're using a microwave, then take your wool and place it into a microwave safe container. Place that in the microwave and nuke it for 10 minutes. Once the fiber has been baked or microwaved, then take it out of the container, get the excess dye off of it, and then place it back in the oven or microwave. Then you're gonna wanna keep an eye on it and watch it until all of the dye is absorbed. Here are the microwaved ones. I found this method to work a lot faster than the oven. I really like this color, this is nice. Once your wool has absorbed all of the dye, then go ahead and take it out of the oven or microwave. Then you're gonna wanna rinse it with hot water and gradually let the water get cooler. Rinse your wool with water until it runs clear so no more dye is coming out. Then squeeze out all the extra water and you're gonna wanna dry it indoors, hang it to dry, and make sure that there's a towel or rag underneath to catch the falling water. Once it dries indoors, now it's good and ready to go and ready for you to use. Congratulations, you've dyed your very own wool for the first time! This 
This is Tina T. Island. Woo! Tina T. Island Television, and you have just learned to dye wool with me. Woo! So, if you like this video, like this video with your like button. Thank you for watching. My name is Tina T. Island. It's been a pleasure. If you want to see more videos from me, subscribe to my YouTube channel, Sprinkle 1111. If you hate this video, give it a thumbs down. If you thought it was tolerable, give it a thumbs up. But if you like me, give me one of these. I'll take either, it's whatever. And if you have a question or comment, type it below in the comment section and I will get back to you. Type it below. Ooh, it's exhausting doing this stuff, you know? <laughs> if you want to see more, subscribe to my channel. I have a YouTube channel and I put out videos bi-weekly on Tuesdays. So subscribe to Scrinkle 1111, baby! If you want to see more, subscribe! And I'll see you later. My name is Tina Tiainen, and bye. And if you want to know where I buy my wool, I get it at Purple Moose. I found them on Etsy, but you can also check them out at purplemoosefelting.com. They're super fast at shipping. I ordered something on Friday, and I got it on Monday. They are fantastic. So check them out at purplemoosefelting.com. Goodbye. Thank you for watching!